everyone and welcome to Tutorial Tuesday and today we are going to alter this small cigar box and I am going to start by gessoing it and I'm going to put on two coats of gesso but I am too lazy to remove the hardware so I literally just painted right over it and it all still functions and I painted the inside too left the bottom free and I'm going to cover it with Prima Tales of You and Me that I got from Cali Scrapper thank you Barbara I love that paper it's so pretty and so I run my, you know, fancy distressing tool across the edges of all the paper. And I cut the paper smaller than the scar box and leave about a quarter inch all the way around. Just because I like the way that looks. And I adhered all the paper down with some Fabri-Tac and I cut the paper to be clear of the hardware that I was too lazy to remove. You know, normally when I do like other boxes I removed the hardware but I wasn't feeling it and it worked out it worked out except for this big gap in the front right here look but it's still it's all good the paper makes it beautiful so now I am going to um, see, there's the inside I covered with the beautiful paper too I am going to distress all around the box with some Tim Holtz um, vintage photo which is my absolute favorite and I'm getting um, all the edges and I'm also trying to get the edges of the paper and I'm going extra heavy on the corners and I really just want to cover everything that is that is the gesso you know because I don't want anything to be stark white and I was so thankful for my paper cutter on this project <laughs> I remember when I didn't have a paper cutter and I'd have to measure and then try to cut with scissors and it doesn't matter how many times you cut with scissors it's not going to be straight at least that's what happened to me but I got a little heavy with the um, ink right there so I tried to rub it in with my finger but actually I like it it looks nice it's not as dark once it's dry because I'm looking at the box right now and it's not a dark But it's just so pretty and I made this box and I needed somewhere to keep my special um, appliques because I just had a pile of mess over here now this beautiful beautiful resin frame I got um, from the trinket parlor and I'm using the Heidi Swap blush and the perfect pearls mist in biscotti to give it some color and I like that blush color by Heidi Swap because it's it's like a dull pink and it matches this paper line perfectly. I don't know if that's the right word, dull. I don't know. But I'm using this teeny tiny tube of E6000 and I am trying to squeeze out everything I can from this teeny tiny tube <laughs> to adhere the frame to the box. But I do prefer my E6000 in the little tubes rather than the giant tubes. But that one's, that one's almost gone. And now this is the uh, Liquid Glass by Deco Arts from their mixed media line. Absolutely love it. It is comparable to um, Glossy Accents. And so I just uh, poured that in there. It's a little thicker though. I feel like glossy accents would have like poured and spread out. This I had to take my um, paintbrush and and get it all in there and make sure I get all the edges really good in the corners. But it does work. It does adhere just as well as glossy accents. This is the first time I'm trying this. This was a little experiment. And now I have all these beautiful pearls that we're going to fill up that frame with. But here's the mistake. is You see where I'm, I'm rolling them around? Okay, well, if you roll them around, then the glue gets all over the pearl, which then gets all over your fingers. So then when you go to touch more pearls, the pearls now stick to your fingers because now your fingers are also covered in glue. So that's my tip for this project is to pat down don't roll rolling was a bad idea <laughs> so now I'm just gonna go through and um, fill in some of the 
gaps with the pearls. And I finally find a use for these really long fingernails. I can just tap it in there. <laughs> it works really well though. It dries clear and it and they all stayed. It was just it's really pretty. Alright, and now I am adding some Fabri-Tac to the bottom of the box because I learned the hard way not to cover the bottom of the box with sticky back felt because once the sticky back felt touches the whatever it's going on, you can't move it. So I'm using the Fabri-Tac so I can move it around, but I didn't put it on the edges because I'm going to um, adhere the edges down with some hot glue. But if you saw the last box I did, you see the fight that I had with the uh, sticky back felt. Do not recommend it. <laughs> At least not for big surfaces. It was just a mess. This worked out really nicely though. So pretty. And now I'm just going to add these little um, flat back pearls from my shop. Shabby Chic Boutique because they make the perfect feet. And you see that beautiful like ribbon lace surrounding the box I got from my friend Michelle Wells. I love that stuff. I put it on the inside of the box too. It's so pretty. Really wanna get some more of that. It's so shabby chic. All right, now we have feet. We need a finishing touch on the top. And there's one of those little rosettes that I hand beaded the pearls in from the uh, tutorial that I saw on Ba's channel, which I think I'll link that below because it's just easy and cute. So cute. So I hope you enjoyed my little box share. And um, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.